with fire and sword needs to be stopped hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're gonna be checking out the with fire and sword mod an eastern europe expansion mod for eu4 before we begin consider leaving a like and subscribing since only 12 percent of you are subscribed and you can become a member today so with fire and sword is an expansion mod for eu4 which brings a ton of content to eastern europe and trust me with this mod you won't have a single dull moment while playing the game now even though this is a pretty new mod it's only been out for like barely two months it has taken the steam workshop over by storm so let's see why everyone has been playing this mod so much and giving it such high reviews basically like i said this is an expansion mod for eastern europe and the recommended countries are poland lithuania the teutonic order the livonian order sweden riazan and muscovy basically this mod brings new mission trees for poland the teutonic order the livonian order lithuania the commonwealth there's a couple of new formable nations spoiler alert the dual order austria hungary white ruthenia yep pretty cool countries there's more than 150 new events new and reworked there's a reworked time of troubles for muscovy and russia a reworked struggle for royal power for poland and some brand new disasters as well as new ideas for the livonian order kurlandia and minor additions to the nations which surround eastern europe and there's also some new monuments so let's check out the orders first now here i am tagged as the teutonic order and we can see that they actually do have a mission tree unlike regular eu4 which basically focuses on conquest on religion development but here the first mission basically we need to have the other order as our subject and basically that moves us along the mission tree now if we go into the decisions we can see that of course we can form germany and prussia but we can also unite the orders and basically what will happen is the country will change to the dual order a completely new nation with new missions new national ideas and more so let's see what will happen if we form it and there we go i've just made them my junior partner and teched up to tech 10 and this is what happens when you take the decision of course we do get new traditions and ambitions we don't have the same government type and we get this brand new color which is pretty sweet to be honest and this cool flag so we also get a brand new government type called the dual order which gives us minus 35 percent state maintenance plus one tolerance of the true faith and minus 20 maximum absolutism but that's not all if we go back to the government tab we can see this right here so this basically represents how much influence one of the orders has because even though it is one country technically it's still two countries sort of like austria hungary and if you put the teutons in power you will get plus 33 percent for defense admin efficiency army professionalism and if we have the livonians in power we get trade efficiency manpower recovery speed yearly corruption and stuff like that honestly both of these are pretty good and you could honestly swap between them as much as you need depending on your playstyle. they also have some pretty insane national ideas like plus two percent missionary strength and infantry combat ability fort defense as a tradition minus ten percent and CCR minus 50% unjustified demands. Pair that with diplomatic ideas and you've got yourself minus 100% unjustified demands. Of course, we have some Catholic modifiers right here, which are pretty good. Plus 15% morale of armies, plus 20 max absolutism, which basically negates the minus 20 you get from your government type. Production efficiency plus 15%, plus 5% discipline, and 10% land fire damage, and some dev cost and culture conversion cost honestly this is already looking like one of the best tags in the game and i do definitely recommend going for a dual order playthrough even if you start as the teutonic order yes form the dual order and not prussia and then you can go into germany maybe but it does seem like a very fun playthrough which adds honestly a lot of much needed flavor for it, these two nations jumping over to sweden real quick we can see their brand new mission tree which is much more in depth come on paradox we need a baltic dlc please but basically we have some missions which focus on us getting out of the denmark pu enforcing our own pu over norway stabilizing the country to get some claims conquering parts of russia subjugating the livonian order 
border, conquering Prussia, colonizing, focusing on increasing your army quality even more, participating in the religious wars and stuff like that. Honestly, this is already 10 times better than vanilla Sweden. Now I have tagged into Austria so we can check out the new Austria-Hungary nation which fans have been begging Paradox to put in the game for years. Unfortunately, they have said that Austria-Hungary, it'll never be in vanilla U4. And here we have the decisions which are form Austria-Hungary diplomatically and militarily. These kinds of decisions appear in many nations like the Commonwealth, Spain, Japan and stuff like that. But basically to form them diplomatically, you have to have a PU over Hungary, own the province of Istria right here and have admin tech 15. To form them militarily, you need to own a bunch of lands and have admin tech 15 once again. So let's take a look at what that tag looks like. And now I've conquered all the lands that I need to form Austria-Hungary with militarily and I've teched up to tech 15. And there we go, we formed Austria-Hungary of course yes please we are now an empire and we have that awesome austria hungary flag which i've been told by some people never actually really existed so any history experts please elaborate in the comments did austria hungary ever actually have this flag but anyway we get this sweet new off-white color i really like it to be honest and let's take a look at their national ideas which are some of the most op in the game basically heretic and heathen provinces do not give any penalties just like new world nations so you can basically conquer whatever you want and we also have plus 25 percent imperial authority growth as well as plus 10% morale of armies and some national manpower and combat ability, dev stuff, trade power stuff, national unrest, inflation reduction, diplo rep, war score and diplo annex cost and discipline and recover army morale speed. And it's honestly very awesome to see Austria Hungary in EU4. I am one of the people that do want it in vanilla but oh well I'm at least glad to have it in this awesome mod. Now here I am tagged into Poland and of course as you all know the most important event when playing Poland is the successor of Vladislav III. But here we can see that we have a third option. Of course, the first one is we need a Jagiellon. And the third one is let's appoint a local noble where you get a very strong ruler, but Lithuania doesn't become a junior partner. Now, this new event is we need the Piasts back on the throne where you get a really good ruler, a 546 as we can see, and we inherit Mazovia. We don't get Lithuania in a PU, but we still become an elective monarchy. So it doesn't matter, you get an elective monarchy with both of these, I'm just gonna pick the regular one, and there we go, we are an elective monarchy. But if we go back in the screen, we can see this interaction right here. Basically, we have the magnates, which are like large landowning guys in Poland, and the nobility in Poland, I can't pronounce that word, so I'm not even gonna try but it's basically a struggle for power between these guys and you need to balance between them in order to get the bonuses that you want like you get some production efficiency goods produced stab hits and stuff like that when the magnets are in power so basically this is for like a tall economic and trade playthrough whereas the nobles you get morale and army tradition and stuff and this is for a conquest oriented playthrough and when playing as Poland there's also incidents that can happen in the HRE about the fate of Silesia and stuff like that do they want to go to war with you over it or not and more than 180 events which will make your PLC playthrough a lot better than vanilla EU4 along with that Curland event which I'm gonna explain shortly and an event for Lithuania to pop out of the PLC if you're losing a war against the Nordic nations what's up with that now here I am tagged as Muscovy and as you know one of the most famous disasters in the game is at the time of troubles which can happen to Muscovy or Russia but featuring a couple of secret endings so let's take a look at what those endings are and of course this is the event you get when you fire the time of troubles we gain a church or lose war exhaustion and this basically triggers now even though it isn't active here because I used console commands it still is active and it triggers an event chain with more than 30 events. Now let's take a look at some of the secret endings this event chain has. Basically through some shenanigans, if someone manages to keep power for more than 5 or 7 years, well, you can get the unique Duma government type. Now what does this mean? Basically, the Duma government type is a republic with the Russian Tsardom abilities. So let's take a look at what that looks like. And that is what this event looks like. Duma and the 7 Boyars. Let us officially institute the Duma or these Boyars have stayed in power for too long now. Now basically both of these options are cursed and blessed if you pick this option the second option you will become a russia peasant republic slash stateless society so let's see what that looks like first we'll do three stab 
Anarchy Interregnum 000, we definitely have been cursed. God have mercy on us all. Anyway, going into the government reforms, we're still at Sardom, but it's anarchy, and we're basically a stateless society. Now here's that event again, and let's see what the Duma looks like. Basically, we will change to a republic and get all the good stuff from the Empire government rank, as well as some burgers influence. And there is the unique Duma government type, which gives you plus 0.5 yearly absolutism, minus 10 max absolutism, and some boyar stuff, but it also has has everything that the Tsardom government type has as well. So this is basically a Tsardom Republic, which is really cool and is definitely a fun and unique way to play as Russia. Now I have tagged into Lithuania for something very interesting. So of course Lithuania does have its own unique mission tree, but when you form the Commonwealth, you get the Commonwealth mission tree, which basically Poland has. But in this mod, if you form the PLC with Lithuania, you get a brand new mission tree. So let's take a look at what that looks like. And there we go, we formed the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, which has a brand new awesome flag by the way. We can see that it looks really cool and we will take new traditions and ambitions. We're no longer a great duchy of course. And there is the mission tree which focuses on converting culture, conquest, industrialization, development and much more. Now this isn't the only thing that can happen with the Commonwealth. Of course there is a ton of flavor like I already showed with Poland. But there is something else. If the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth is in a war with a Nordic country and it's losing, there is an event that happens where Lithuania proper can pop out and become a vassal of that country. So let's take a look at what that looks like. And this is the event that pops out. We'll hang this blasted traitor and make Lithuania a vassal. Now Lithuania didn't actually become a vassal of anyone because I'm not in a war with anyone. But basically if you're like Norway, Sweden, Denmark, whatever, and you're fighting the Commonwealth, you can get Lithuania as a vassal for free. And there is another fun event for the Commonwealth. And here's that event, Kurland and Semigalia, basically we can pick, well, nothing to happen, to release Kurland as a subject and make them a march, or to release and play as them. Now let's see what happens if we make them a march. There we go, Kurland popped out. Now the fun thing that happens here is Kurland actually pops out with exploration and expansion ideas. And basically you can have them colonize for you as the Commonwealth while you're taking care of continental matters. And Kurland's national ideas are insane in this mod. We have tagged into them even though we're still a subject of the Commonwealth. And basically we do have a few missions to colonize some stuff. But let's take a look at the... Kuronian national ideas, which I'm told by the creators is basically Prussia of the seas. Now you get plus 10% morale of armies and minus 20% ship costs along with plus 15% trade efficiency. We get merchants in trade range, trade power abroad and ship trade power, production efficiency and ship building time, naval force limit and colonial range, prestige, heavy ship combat ability and ship durability, and naval combat bonus off of own coast. They definitely are Prussia of the sea. And honestly this event for Kurland to pop out is a very fun event and you should take them as a march if you get this event when playing this mod. They'll do a bunch of colonizing for you and their navy is really powerful. Oh look what happened to the anarchist Russia I showed earlier. Autonomous Russian territories. Grand Republic. Alright, that flag is badass. Anarchy. Seeing that flag would make anybody tremble. It says a death right there. Now I want to show off the new monuments that have been added to this mod. In Krakow, we have Vavel Royal Castle, which at tier 3 gives you minus 25% local construction cost in the province and gives you plus 1 yearly prestige, minus 20% institution embracement cost, and plus 25% institution spread at tier 3. Pretty awesome. We also have the Malborg Castle in Marienburg and at tier 3 it gives you local defensiveness in the province and minus 30% fort maintenance globally as well as plus 30% national garrison growth. You know it would honestly be pretty cool to take that monument over as Switzerland too. In Hungary we have the Corvin Castle at tier 3 it gives you plus 50% garrison size globally. In the area you get plus 50% garrison growth and in the province you get plus 50% local defensiveness. Now imagine these two monuments in the same nation. Well you would probably do it as a commonwealth to be honest. No one's gonna get three or forts. In Kiev along with the monument we already have we also have the golden gate which at tier 3 it gives you minus 1% global prestige decay and plus 200 governing cap as well as defensiveness in the province. The Winter Palace has also been added to St. Petersburg, giving you minus 0.05 monthly autonomy change and plus one free policies globally. 
Now, I was gonna say, imagine having this as Sweden and having five policies, but you do need the culture to be Muscovite and have your own culture as well. And finally, we have St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow, which at tier 3 gives you minus 25% missionary maintenance cost and plus 1 yearly patriarch authority. Now, here I have tagged into Galicia Volhynia, one of the Ruthenian miners, and we can see that they have a pretty good mission tree overall, which finally leads you to forming Ruthenia, another nation which has had a ton of flavor added to it. And here I am as Ruthenia, which gives you a brand new mission tree in addition to the previous mission tree you would have when playing as one of the Ruthenian miners, so these missions get added along to the other ones. And there's also a playthrough that has been recommended by the creators of this mod, Ryazan into Smolensk into Ruthenia. You get three unique mission trees into one, which would be an awesome playthrough. So with fire and sword, does it need to be stopped? Well, yes, but actually no, that's just the title of this series. This mod has it all, dude. Autonomous Russian territories with anarchy, a ton of flavor to Poland and Lithuania, Prussia of the seas in Kurland, a ton of flavor to all the surrounding nations of Eastern Europe, a ton of flavor for the Russian miners, which I couldn't get into. Flavor for the Ukrainian miners, you can form White Ruthenia. Kurland is awesome. The dual order is crazy. Austria, Hungary, and tons and tons of flavor. More than 180 events. And believe me, you will never have a boring moment when playing this mod. I mean, what else do you want? And I highly recommend for everyone to check out this mod, especially if you're a fan of playing in the Eastern Europe super region or around it. You'll never have a dull moment. New monuments, new events, new missions, new national ideas, you name it, this mod has it. And it's really no one that it's one of the most popular mods of all time for you for and it's only been out for less than two months and a huge shout out to the creators of this mod it obviously took a lot of time and effort to make and i do think it paid off since it is a great mod and a big thank you to the grand magnus for helping me out understand this mod all its events the cool stuff you can do the nations and different types of playthroughs if you want to check out this mod for yourself as always the link will be in the description and let me know in the comments below what's the next mod that you would like to see me showcase if you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe since only 12 percent of you are subscribed and you can become a member today thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another eu4 video